Joining me now, David Daly, a senior fellow for Fair Vote and author of Unrigged, How Americans Are Battling Back to Save Democracy. And Charlie Bonner, communications director of the grassroots group Move Texas, where redistricting is sure to be a slugfest. It is good to see you all, Dave. I'm going to start with you. Just sort of your top line thoughts on the numbers we saw today. I know that a lot of people are saying, don't read too much into these numbers just yet. What do you take from them? This is the starting gun on the most important and determinative process um, in American politics right now. This is going to determine whether or not Democrats have the ability to hold on to a really slender majority in Congress. That is only five seats. Republicans um, control the process entirely in the states that you've been talking about, Texas and Georgia, Florida, North Carolina. They will have the ability to redraw in New Hampshire and Kansas and gain seats there. They could also potentially crack blue cities and red states like Louisville, Kentucky and Memphis, Tennessee. Um, I think you are looking at probably closer to a 12 to 14 seat advantage that uh, Republicans will pick up uh, due to redistricting alone. And the question becomes whether Democrats will be able to blunt that to some effect in New York and Illinois and Maryland. Uh, but this is a net positive for Republicans. And the question becomes whether they will be able to continue to use extreme partisan gerrymandering as an effort to defy the changing demographics of states like Texas and Georgia and Florida. Charlie, my friend, I know that there's like not a lot happening today in Texas, so you probably had plenty of time to just call through this data. But tell me sort of top lines for you looking at it. What is it going to mean for a group like yours in Texas? Well, we know that Texas has really become ground zero in this national fight for the freedom to vote. And today it's clear why. Uh, we are seeing a massive, a seismic shift in the Texas demography, and it's being driven by people of color. The Texas Tribune is reporting 95% of the growth we see right now is coming from communities of color in Texas. Uh, and so it is no surprise that those in power, afraid that they can't win on the issues, are attempting to stack the get deck against these voters. You know, Dave, a lot of states have gone to independent redistricting commissions to try and take the process out of partisan politicians' hands. But you recently pointed out that one of those nonpartisan commissions might hire a law firm that helped gerrymander several states' maps. So is there any truly fair redistricting process out there? It's a great question. I think what we're seeing right now really is the limit of independent commissions in states like Arizona, where they've been hijacked by Republicans, in states like Michigan, where Republicans have been so determined to get back in the room that the law firm that um, Republicans use to defend their gerrymandered maps in Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Virginia, and elsewhere is trying to sneak in as the counsel for the uh, Michigan Independent Commission. Um, I think that as long as we have single member winner take all districts, you are going to see that the district lines simply matter more than anything else. I think the best thing we could possibly do is move towards a, a system of proportional representation, multi-member districts along the lines of something Congressman Don Beyer from Virginia has proposed uh, called the uh, Fair Representation Act. Right. It's interesting, given the sort of lack of appetite to contend with something like the filibuster, reimagining redistricting in that way sounds a little bit like a fantasy project. I saw you, Charlie, shaking your head, so feel free to weigh in on that. But I also want to ask you, you know, Democrats' signature voting rights bill, H.R. 1, the For the People Act, would also ban partisan and racial gerrymandering. Yesterday, Ted Cruz blocked Schumer from bringing H.R. 1 to the Senate floor. Now the Senate is in recess until September. What went through your mind when that happened yesterday and what would you say to Ted Cruz given the chance? Well, it appears once again that Ted Cruz is spending a little bit more uh, time out of the state than he is in the state. Because if he was here uh, as we are and when he flees when we are in need, we know that Texans support our freedom to vote. 
and we are doing everything that we can. We are seeing first time voters, activists, business leaders speaking out in defense of the freedom to vote. And we're going to see this continue as we move into this redistricting process. We know that the same folks who are getting engaged, who are getting pissed off right now for the very first time, are gonna go into this redistricting process dead set on having their voices heard. We refuse to have these lines drawn that split up our communities just for their own political gain. You know, Dave, of course, a lot of Democrats, Biden, have said they're going to out-organize Republicans to overcome their institutional advantages. And, you know, we could all sort of feel the collective eye roll of people like Charlie who are actually going to be tasked with doing that work. I mean, can you out-organize gerrymandering, voter suppression laws? Is there a canvas strategy for that? You can't do that. Listen, after the 2018 election, there were 59 million Americans living in a state where one or both chambers of the state legislature were controlled by the party that won fewer votes in the 2018 election. Uh, that's about one in six of us, and it's all of these states we keep coming back to. Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, Wisconsin, North Carolina. Um, in Wisconsin in 2018, 203,000 more votes for, for Democratic members of the assembly. Republicans held a 63-36 majority, nevertheless. In, in Pennsylvania, it was about 315,000 more votes for Democratic candidates. You can't out-organize this. And what all of these efforts of voter suppression are going to do, um, you can see how they are focused in the states that are changing most rapidly and which are most competitive. So uh, these bills are emerging from Arizona and from Georgia and from Texas. You had three states. Dave, I think I might have I might have lost you. And, and Charlie, I'm going to bring you in there because I want to make sure that we get to this, which is that, of course, four years ago today, white supremacists were marching violently in Charlottesville shouting, white lives matter, you will not replace us. Research last spring suggested that a lot of capital insurrectionists were motivated by fears of white Americans being replaced by non-white Americans. You know, Charlie, I, I think that there are lines you can draw to connect the dots between those moments what we saw out of your state today with SB1 and the data that we're going to see coming out of this census, how do you connect them? Certainly. And, you know, Texas has been gerrymandered for a long time now. And we have also had these voter suppression laws for decades. And unfortunately, those in power do not feel like they need to represent all of us anymore. And what we see as a result is a radicalization of the policies being proposed, particularly for myself as a queer Texan, uh, I think that voter suppression and gerrymandering are an equality issue. We see the attacks on trans kids that are happening right now and uh, attacks on access to gender affirming care. Those are a direct result of the silencing of our voices where they can vilify their own constituents instead of representing us. All right, Dave Daly, who I lost to the tech gremlins, Charlie Bonner, as always, thank you both so much for your time tonight. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.